Hi everybody, how is it going? I'm Mariana and in this video I want to talk about Danish artist uh, Per Kirkeby and two very different but equally beautiful books about his brick works. The first one is titled Per Kirkeby, The Complete Bricks, Volume 1, The Installations. The volume was designed by Studio Klaus II and printed in Denmark by Narayana Press and it was published by Walter Koenig, Museum Jorn and Galerie Susanne Ottesen. The book is the first of three volumes documenting the brick works of Per Kirkeby. Volume 1 focuses on Kirkeby's brick installations at galleries and museums, as well as a series of temporary stage sets he created for theatre and film. Volume 2 will go on to document Kirkeby's unrealized brick projects, which include both sculptures and full-scale architecture. Finally, Volume 3 will cover Kirkeby's brick sculptures in public spaces, most of which were created from the 1990s onwards. The three volumes also extend the only existing annotated catalogue of the artist's uh, works, published by Kunsthaus Bregenz in 1997, to include the last 20 years of Kirkeby's uh, brick oeuvre. The annotated complete catalogue of his temporary installations is preceded by two essays by Magnus uh, Ture Clausen and Wouter Davids. Per Kirkeby built his first brick sculptures in 1966 for an exhibition in Copenhagen. The installation consisted of a low stele of stacked bricks, a platform of bricks laid side by side on the floor and a blue fence assembled to form a square. At first glance, both the bricks and the fence were closer to everyday life than the conventional understanding of art at the time. They opened up for a situation where life and art could exist side by side. Without being entirely identical, bricks are the same size. Their content is, so to speak, the same. and They perform the same movement. Repeating the same element any number of times infinitely is the premise on which the forms develop. This interest in repetition can be linked to more general debates on serial aesthetics, which during the years the first brick sculptures were built were prevalent in both pop art and minimalist objects in a clear break with the modernist art of the 1950s. This serial approach offered a non-expressive way of working, where the subjectivity of the artist was replaced by, or combined with, a system that co-created the work. After the first brick installations in 1966, nine years passed before Kirkeby created another temporary brickwork for an exhibition at Aarhus Art Museum in 1975. Here he made a brick wall with uh, recesses for three large paintings forming a triptych-like uh, structure. There was a stepped gable above the recesses and at the base there were steps that created a transition to the space in front of the work. The wall functioned as a supporting surface for the paintings and appeared as an independent architectural facade with Danish neo-Gothic associations. The year after, in 1976, Kirkeby continued his investigation of the connection between painting and architecture in another wall built for the exhibition International Events 1972-1976 during the Venice Biennale. The work was built using bricks from a demolished building in the area, making it coarser and more rustic in appearance. The Aarhus and uh, Venice sculptures were both built on site in the exhibition space using mortar for the first time, a principle adhered to in all subsequent brick installations. Building the brick works on site meant that Kirkeby could take account of factors like scale, position, light and other phenomenological aspects, thus allowing the surroundings to play a role in shaping the works. Once the exhibitions were over, the works were demolished and the bricks discarded. Kirkeby's temporary brick installations relate schematically and investigatively to what it means to experience architecture or public space in general. They thematize architecture by operating at its borders, by physically reconstructing, copying or transforming dimensions of built space as we know it. In the early brick installations, Kirkeby focused on architecture as a fragment, piece of scenery or ruin. This was followed by a period where the relationship to architecture primarily played out in closed monumental blocks. 
The next shift in the temporary brick projects and the relationship to the field of architecture occurred uh, with a series of open square sculptures, beginning with a sculpture for Fruit Market Gallery in Edinburgh in 1985 and culminating several years later with his tripartite installation uh, in Grenoble in 1992. The sculptures built during this period were all oriented towards bodily interaction. The development of new forms usually involved a new relationship to the surroundings, a new way of reflecting architectural or spatial experience and or new ways of addressing the body and thinking. It was a general principle for Kirkeby that his temporary brick installations were built using local bricks. Bricks have different dimensions in different countries. Danish bricks, for example, are smaller than German bricks, but larger than Dutch bricks. Late in life, Kirkeby decided to allow his earlier temporary sculptures to be built again in new spaces and with new bricks. As a result, since 2015, a number of the installations have been either partly or totally rebuilt. The new versions retain their original titles and thereby a relationship to the space they were originally built in. The potential for reconstruction changes the site-specific aspect of the works. From being irreversible installations built in response to a specific situation and subsequently demolished, they are now being rebuilt and brought to life in new exhibition contexts. The second book we are looking at today is titled Per Kirkeby Architecture by Thomas Bow Jensen, published by Edition Blundell. It was designed by Michael Jensen and also printed by Narayana Press in Denmark. Kierkeby's approach to architecture, which developed in his artistically formative years in the 1960s and was refined over the next two or three decades, is reflected in the way in which he has later looked back on his childhood in Copenhagen's northwestern suburb. Why bricks? I don't know, but I can't get along with other materials. I have tried. I lie down on my cot for a moment and my childhood comes back to me bricks everywhere. The Grundvik church and the whole quarter around it. Public housing from the 30s and 40s that for me are still a high point in Danish architecture. In 1971, Per Kirkeby traveled to Central America, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras and Belize to study the architecture of the Mayas. In many ways, the journey marked a new beginning in Kirkeby's artistic quest. The expedition at the beginning of the 1970s was the result of a wish to go in the opposite direction from the one taken at the beginning of the 60s. Now I wanted firm ground under my feet. Now I wanted ties and not abstract freedom. The brick is for many civilizations the world over an existential condition. In the past uh, seven or eight thousand years, nothing has happened except that the format has changed uh, slightly. Evolution has consequently almost stagnated, since in many places in the world bricks are produced in exactly the same way as they were 5,000 years ago. The Industrial Revolution to which we have grown accustomed has essentially not contributed anything else than to enable us to make many more bricks per brickyard worker. But the brick itself is quite indifferent. It is basically the same simple building block it has always been. Without being completely uniform, the bricks are equally large. They contain the same in a matter of speaking. They perform the same movement. To repeat the same unit a number of times infinitely is a precondition for the way the forms take shape. Reach out and bring back. The building's body and the human body are closely linked. The smallest building component, the brick, was directly derived from the human body. The format and weight are carefully adapted to the human hand and muscle, and thus to the systematic uh, work process with a brick in one hand and a trowel in the other that has been practiced for millennia. Brick lane has become an archetypical craft that in a way is embedded in our common physical memory, whether one is a mason or not. It is this fundamental emotion that is aroused when we face a brick building. A minimal form, cut to the bone, but at the same time seated with a long history. 
no matter how we toss and turn brick, there is no one on this earth, whether from Bali or Trondheim, who can escape the fact that brick has something historic to it. Even the purest brick also embodies an aura of feelings, stories and associations, and it is this line that I have followed. Again, two very different books. Uh, the first, uh, very methodical and specific, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing the next two volumes of the series. And the second, uh, very generously illustrated and uh, quite rich in uh, interesting biographical information. Check them out at your local bookstore. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was interesting to you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.